Good evening and welcome to Friday's 6 1. The headlines this evening. Taoiseach insists every effort is being made to accommodate asylum seekers as some set up tents in Dublin church grounds. We're doing our very best in a very difficult and challenging circumstance to provide accommodation, but accommodation isn't always readily available. Three women are injured, one seriously in an assault at a house in Dundalk in County Loud. A vote for change, says Labour, as Tories lose hundreds of seats in local elections and Blackpool by-election. And a significant contribution to journalism and to public service. President among those paying tribute to Brian Dobson as he retires from RTE. It's been a great 37 years, but the time has come to say, if I can borrow a phrase, that Dobble has left the building. The Taoiseach has insisted efforts are being made in difficult and challenging circumstances to provide accommodation to asylum seekers. Simon Harris made the remarks after a number of international number of male asylum seekers without state-provided accommodation reached a record number this week. We speak to Lucky Kambule of the movement of asylum seekers in Ireland. And an investigation is launched after hundreds of seabirds are injured in one of the worst oil spills off the southeast coast in decades. Welcome back. The main news this evening. The team loads of buildings that are free in this country, even in this town. Charles Hawhey in the, in the 1980s. Mr Arnold wrote for the Irish Times, the Irish Independent, the Sunday Independent and the Guardian. Now, so come on 6-1. Bookshops call for reform of the free school book scheme after more than half a dozen smaller retailers have closed after becoming unviable. And coming up in sport, we'll have the team news and all the latest from the two camps ahead of tomorrow's Investec Champions Cup semi-final at Croke Park. When it comes to education. In response, the Department of Education has said it's been engaging with the representative groups over the last 18 months and will continue to do so. For this bookshop, though, their story has come to an end. Connor Hunt, RTE News. Now, all eyes on Croke Park this weekend. Here's Claire with the sports news. I certainly are. Thank you, David. Leinster have made two changes to the side that beat La Rochelle for tomorrow's Investec Champions Cup sellout semi final at Croke Park. They're still without Hugo Keenan and Gary Ringrose as Josh van der Fleer and Ross Maloney start. Jimmy O'Brien is named on the bench. It's Croke Park, but not as you'd know it. Many of Leinster's players gave a tip of the hat to their hosts by going with a round ball for their Eva match captain's run. And Jimmy Osborne looks pretty handy at it. Taking in an occasion, the squad says it's embraced. We feel very fortunate as a group to get the opportunity to have a crack there tomorrow. Um, we have Declan Darcy and us, obviously, over the last couple of years, it's been great. His message was like, it magnifies your performance, whether it's a good one or a bad one. So uh, our plan and our prep over the last two weeks has been about getting our best performance and hopefully that will get the crowd involved and build an atmosphere and make it a special day for us. And according to the coach, it's now all about marking that occasion with distinction as Leinster bid to make a fifth final in seven years. That's the thing about playing in these big games, who can apply the most pressure on the opposition. So... Um, and that, that's what we try to focus on. So um, just dealing with the occasion, all the rest, and you know, there's nerves and different pieces, which is natural. But you just need to harness that in the right manner. So it's a positive for you. So um, and hopefully that'll be the case. Incredibly, it's 15 years ago since Leinster's breakthrough win in this very fixture against Munster in 2009. And that win, the only other club fixture to have been played here at Croke Park, well, that is what's ultimately led to the relentless pursuit of a fifth European title. Next up for Leinster, well, that happens to be Northampton. 
we know we're going to have to put our game on the pitch, play rugby the way we want to play it to go out there and win. We're not, we're not turning up tomorrow to t- try and disrupt them or take them off the game plan. We're coming to put our game on the pitch um, and, and test them as much as they're going to want to test us. So rugby returns to Croke Park. Given the appetite for tickets for this one, it might not be another 15 years before it's back again. Justin Tracy, RTE News, Croke Park. Well, there are two provincial football finals this weekend in Munster. Clare welcomed Kerry to Ennis, while it's Galway against Mayo and Connacht. The draw for the Sam Maguire was made earlier this week, raising questions about its timing and the championship structure. The week started with the draws for the Sam Maguire Cup, which seemed a little premature considering the four provincial football finals hadn't been played yet. The GA will say that they needed to allow counties to plan, but while the draw illuminated the pathway for the competing counties, it did seem to affect, for example, this Sunday's Connacht finalists. Whoever wins on Sunday, either Galway or Mayo, will be in an extremely difficult group, with the Ulster runners up, Derry and Westmeath while the losers of the Connacht final will be in with the Leinster winners, Roscommon and Cavan. The reaction in Galway today to the draw happening last Tuesday was quite negative. It makes no sense to me why the GEA make the draw before the provincial championships. It's illogical, it's asinine, and the view in Galway is that it has kind of diluted the Connacht championship final a little bit, and I think it's a poor decision. Knowing the groups at this stage seem to take away from the Connacht final. I think the draw taking place was very wrong. It wasn't the, the right decision. Um, it's prestigious to win a Connacht championship. The Connacht has been very competitive. Uh, the last seven winners, three times Galway, twice Mayo, twice Roscommon. So it is a competitive environment, a prestigious competition. And to take the focus away from that and to be talking about a, a draw and what the permutations of that draw is probably wrong. Group stages are also coming in for criticism, with 24 games needed to eliminate just four counties. Arguably, a bit daft, really. You have, you have 16 teams. They're, they're going to play weekend over five weekends. They're going to play 24 games to reduce just four teams. And uh, arguably, teams that uh, got knocked out in the provincial rounds are maybe better placed. An example could be Cavan and Roscommon. As a result of the draw taking place last Tuesday, the path forward for Galway male footballers is now clear. Whoever wins the Connacht title here on Sunday will be at home in two weeks' time for the visit of the league champions Derry while whoever loses will be at home for the visit of Cavan. Marty Morrissey, RT News, Pierce Stadium, Galway. State man won the day's feature on day four of the Punchestown Festival. He held off the challenge of Irish Point to land the champion hurdle for Paul Townend and Willie Mullins. They go to the final flight and it's Stateman from Irish Point as they were at Cheltenham. Stateman is over, Irish Point is second and inside the closing stages it's Stateman for his 10th grade one. Back to back champion hurdles and up towards the line winner 4,377 in the Boodles champion hurdle for Willie Mullins and Stateman. Back in second is Irish Point. Arne Slot said today that he's confident a move to Liverpool will happen. The Feyenoord head coach has reportedly agreed a deal to take over from Jurgen Klopp at Anfield next season. Feyenoord and Liverpool have yet to publicly confirm if the deal is done. There's a full programme in the Premier Division of the Men's SSE Electricity League tonight. St. Pat's host Drogheda Sligo welcome Waterford. The leaders of Shelburne are at Dundalk, while Daily Mount Park hosts the big Dublin Derby between Bowes and second place Shamrock Rovers. Galway United host third place Derry City. The semi final matches are continuing at the World Snooker Championship, and both are all square. Jack Jones and Stuart Bingham are tied on eight frames each after their session at the Crucible this afternoon. They are back in action in the morning. While Dave Gilbert and Karen Wilson are also tied on eight frames each after their morning session, they will resume shortly at seven o'clock. Seamus Parr looks set to miss the cut at the PGA Tours CJ Cup in Texas. The Waterford golfer has just finished his second round and is two under after 67, which is two off the projected cut. American Jake Napoli is on 13 under par through 17 holes and is now two clear of the field. In Cricket Ireland's women are in action at the moment at a T20 World Cup qualifier. Having elected to bat, Ireland made 144 for their in 20 the overs against the Netherlands in Abu Dhabi. Laura Delaney with three fours in a row in a final over. They're looking to make it a clean sweep in the pool and avoid a semi-final against the number one siege of Sri Lanka. The Dutch are 65 for five after 12 overs. That's Friday Sports for now, so it's back over to Sharon.